she founded Air Gallery in New York City. She was co-founder of Air Gallery, which is still functioning. So her work became very uh, feminist oriented and very um, 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 political, uh, especially like during the Vietnam War and things. So some of her imagery was really connected uh, very clearly um, to current events and her concepts. Um, then in, as she got older, she actually, there was a subway state, the Lincoln Center subway stop. She designed that's uh, the tiles for that subway stop, which was a big thing. She died in 2009. Um, so here she is, kind of mid, mid age, maybe, um, standing in front of one of the works. Um, we're going to go, we'll look at one of the videos. Um, so she used metaphor, which we've talked about before, and I said we were going to talk about today. So she used a metaphorical visual language that combined images and words, um, and she did it really successfully. So uh, she's a good example of who to look at if you're interested in working with metaphor. Um, there was an interview that I embedded, a uh, magazine article. So uh, this is one of her Vietnam pieces. Um, and this is this video is on Balab and Spira. They're being interviewed in that. So what is a metaphor? Can you answer that question? It's a comparison without using like or as. <laughs> Right. That's from school. <laughs> yes, that is from school. Yeah. And my least favorite thing was anything that started out with compare and contrast. Ugh, I know. I, it my brain hurt. <laughs> I didn't. I never liked that anyway, because it's like if you're good at stuff, you're doing that anyway. You know, you're you're finding those differences. Um, I always thought of it as something that just stands for something else, something that, you know, it's not just what it is, but it's more. That's good. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. So do you think that metaphor is part of your work? Not yet. Hmm. So the questions are, are you interested in working in a metaphorical method and how can you achieve that goal? Yeah. So let's, let's just go and look at some of Nancy Spiro's work. Mm -hmm. Ugh, this window that comes down drives me insane. Huh. All right. <clears throat> this was incredibly prolific. Um, wow. She talks about <laughs> working with a printmaker as an assistant in the studio mm -hmm. and uh, that she would do, you know she was directing you know this process and they would pull these beautiful prints and then she would say kind of like well now we have to mess it up and that artist had a very hard time doing that but this was her her work was like a scraffito it was scumbling it was about pentimenting about leaving, you know, some of the um, layers showing through the work. And some people just have a really hard time with that. But she felt like she's, you know, it was like a wall where you could see things that were underlying and that was, you know, what she wanted to portray in the work, um, the history. Um, so here's some of her. Wow. Very cave painting ish. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very raw. Um, uh, very raw. Yeah. And um, almost like guttural kind of work. Oh, cool.
I, I died of something under, under electric, electric shock. shock. shock, yeah. I don't know what this word is, though. It Rolex. looks like Rolex. <laughs> uh, it's hard to do. Rolex. It's R O D E. E Z. Yeah. Rodez. Rodez. Oh. I don't know. Oh, cool. So did, you, wait, I said, are those drawn images or did she? Uh, these are these her prints. Okay. So she, she carved those or something uh, and then did printing? They were um, lithographs, I believe. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, cool. So these things, for example, now that's a collage. I don't know yeah. this verse. This she had, and you'll see it in one of the videos. Um, she had this collection of figures that were just cut. And so she would use those uh, in, in the prints. And she had, I don't know, hundreds of them. Wow. So that she could reuse them. That She was started out as a painter. And what she wanted to do was she wanted to be able to reuse some of the images. So that's when she moved to printmaking. This one, I can't swear since that's her. Yeah, it's her handwriting. Yeah, that's hers. Collage. I find it interesting that no matter how many figures are in the painting, one is always got a white face. Yeah, or like highlights. You're right. Installation. Oh, wow. That's cool. She did a lot of Egyptian iconography. Yeah, that almost looks like graffiti, which is super cool. See, this is that same thing. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, wow. So did she have like a Vietnam collection? Like was that one of her and uh, shows? Yeah. Clearly, we know this image. Yeah. You know, it's it's hers. And she would do things like she would take photographs and then they would do like reverse images and then transfer them to black and white and then maybe another color. So they were layered and it was, she was altering existing photographs and things that she saw in magazines and whatnot. So a lot of it's honed from um, the uh, media of the time. Oh, that's cool. I don't know if that's hers. Yeah, look at the name at the bottom. Yeah, this is not hers. This is what I hate about Bing. <laughs> so this is hers. Mm -hmm. This gives you a good idea of the size. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. 